my channel. In today's video, I want to do a collaboration of a whole bunch of chicken meals that I have done in the past. So this is going to be a whole month's worth of chicken dinners. I hope that you guys like it. Let's go ahead and get started. To get us started, we're going to be making some chicken bacon ranch sandwiches. So to my crock pot, I'm going to go ahead and add in about two pounds of chicken breast to the very bottom. Make sure that you do go ahead and spray it first. Next, I'm going to add about an ounce of ranch seasoning. And of course, I'm just guessing because if you have too much, I'm sure it'll taste delicious anyways. And then I have one block of cream cheese I'm going to put right on top of that. Go ahead and put the lid on. Let that cook on a high heat for about four hours or you can do a low heat for about six to eight hours. And then it is perfect. Do you guys see how well it is just um, shredding? It is just doing so well. It's so tender. And you're just going to mix all that cream cheese in with the chicken. And I'm going to make it even more cheesy, so I'm going to add about a cup of shredded cheese and then a cup of diced up bacon and then give that a really good stir. And of course, this, this has ranch, this has bacon. You guys know it's going to be delicious. Um, you can do this as like sliders. I've, I've done that. That's really good. You can do this as like little pinwheels or you can do like a sandwich like this so so delicious and of course I just paired mine with some baked beans and some french fries next we have chicken burrito bowls and I like to make everything in the crock pot so we're going to do this in the crock pot as well I'm going to go ahead and lightly spray that and then for this I just use some Boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I love having chicken thighs um, instead of chicken breast for this type of meal. So delicious. I'm going to use one cup of chicken broth and just a little bit of this lime juice just to kind of give it a good flavor. And then about an ounce of taco seasoning. And then I like to freeze my um, bl black beans just because I make them from scratch. I kind of just soak them in the water and then I cook them in the Instant Pot. So I'm going to put about a can's worth of black beans in there and then a can of corn, a can of Rotel, and then a can of petite diced tomatoes. I love using petite versus regular. The regular ones are just so big. My kids end up not eating them because they're so big. Go ahead and cook that on low for about six to eight hours and you're going to have perfect chicken that will just shred so easily. I like using my meat masher just to kind of shred up the chicken a little bit and since it's so tender, um, it's going to be so easy to shred up. This came out to be a little bit more liquidy than I would prefer, but it's still good either way. I just didn't put as much liquids when I did my burrito bowl itself. And so I made some rice in the Instant Pot and put this right on top. I like to top it with some sour cream and some shredded cheese. And of course, we could put this in a tortilla making a burrito any way that you want to do this. But I love having a burrito bowl. So, so delicious. Next is chicken bacon ranch in the oven. The first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and get started on our mixture. So we have one block of cream cheese that we're just gonna put in a medium sized bowl. And then I have about a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise we're gonna put in there. I know mayonnaise kind of seems weird, but just trust the process. This was very, very delicious. My husband raved about it. He said he wanted me to make it every single night. <laughs> he really enjoyed it, so. Um, I'm also going to put in one cup of cheddar cheese and then half a cup of diced up bacon and then we're just going to go ahead and give that a good stir. It is very hard to stir through so if you have to add a little bit more mayonnaise just to make it a little bit more on the creamy side that's fine. I ended up adding just a little bit of mayonnaise just like another couple of tablespoons. And then to a nine by 13 pan, I'm gonna go ahead and lightly spray that. And then I have some chicken breast that I had just cut in half just because I like it a little bit more thin when it comes to these type of dinners. And I'm just laying them all over my nine by 13 pan. So you can, you don't have to cut them in half, but that's just what I like to do. And then I'm just going to lightly season this with some salt and pepper. We're 
we're gonna grab our mixture that we had just made and I'm just going to spread that all over our chicken breast and since this is a little bit on the thicker side of a type of um, cream cheese mixture it does work out better if you use a knife but you can definitely do whatever you prefer it's just pretty thick so if you want to thin it up that's fine too and then I put the rest of that cheese right on top. So we have another cup of cheddar cheese right on top of that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes until that chicken is nice and cooked through. And then of course, I just like to pair it with like a baked potato and green beans. It really is whatever you want to do. This meal was delicious. Definitely recommend it was probably our favorite meal out of all of these that I'm showing you here today. Next, I wanted to do some chicken and dumplings in the crock pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and lightly grease my crock pot. I'm gonna put about two pounds of chicken breast right at the very bottom. I'm gonna to top it with half a teaspoon of salt and then half a teaspoon of pepper. And then I have a teaspoon of parsley, half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of thyme, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then two bay leaves. And then I have about a whole onion that I went ahead and diced up that I'm gonna put at the very bottom of my crock pot as well. Two cups of chicken broth. One can of cream of chicken soup, and I'm just trying to spread that out so it's kind of like right on top of the chicken there. Go ahead and put the lid on. I'm gonna let that cook on a low heat for about six hours. After it's about five hours cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on some biscuits. So I'm gonna just take a can of biscuits and I like to flatten it out and then just kind of put them into bite-sized pieces. I like to use a pizza cutter because I find that that's really easy to use. Once I have all those diced up, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of smush my chicken, get it nice and shredded. And if it's cooking on a low heat for about six to eight hours, it should be fairly easy to go ahead and shred. Okay, and then I'm just gonna stir it all together and there should be some bay leaves in there that I went ahead and took out as well. And then I have two cups of mixed vegetables that I went ahead and put in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a good mix. You wanna go ahead and mix that before we put the biscuits because I'm just going to lightly put these on top and I just kind of want to barely submerge them into the liquids. Um, but I just kind of one by one put all of the pieces in there. I want it spread out really evenly. So I'm kind of meticulous about how I'm doing it. And then I'm just smushing it down just barely because I just barely want them into the liquids. I'm going to let that cook on the high setting for about another hour, 45 minutes to an hour is about right. And then I'm just going to give it a good stir. You don't want to take the lid off and stir it you know, every 20 minutes, you just let it cook for an hour and then they should be perfect. And here it is. You can always add in more dairy products if you feel like there's not enough liquids or it's not creamy enough. A lot of times I'll add in some half and half just to make it a little bit more on the creamy side. Up next is creamy burrito bowls. So to my crock pot, I need one block of cream cheese, and then I'm gonna put in one can of Rotel, one can of black beans, one can of corn. And then I have one packet of ranch seasoning I'm gonna go ahead and put right on top. And then I have some rotisserie chicken that I just put in there. Um, you can also do chicken breasts if you please. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of pepper. And then about a teaspoon of cumin and a teaspoon of chili powder. Go ahead and give that a good stir. Just kind of do the best that you can because you have that block of cream cheese at the very bottom. And then I just put in a cup of water. You can also put in a cup of chicken broth just to give it a little bit of a liquid form. Go ahead and put the lid on and let that cook on a low heat for about four hours. The chicken's already done. You're just kind of making sure everything is warm and that the cream cheese is cooked through. And then I cook some rice and just put it on top of that rice. Absolutely delicious. One of my favorite meals. This one is a hit. How is it, Bubba? It's good. It's good? You like it? 
Good stuff. You like it? Mm -hmm. Super good. Super good. What's you? Good. Good. Hi. Do you like it? Yes, but it's spicy. It is not spicy. Yeah, it is. She's weird. Daddy, it's just spicy. It's like not even a hint of spiciness. It's only spicy because I put this in there. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? It's spicy. Okay. <laughs> Next, I'm going to be doing my version of a rotisserie chicken, but I'm going to be doing in the crock pot. So I need two teaspoons of paprika. I need one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder. I need one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of rosemary, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of oregano, and then one teaspoon of thyme. Go ahead and giving that a really good stir. Now that I've already patted my chicken to make it sure it's nice and dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put that rub mixture right on top of my chicken. And then I flipped it and then I did it on the other side as well. Now I have my crock pot and I'm gonna put all my vegetables at the very bottom. So I have my potatoes and then I'm gonna put in pretty close to a pound of carrots, just whatever was left in that package. So I guess it was more like half of a pound. And then I'm gonna put my chicken right on top of that. I just wanna put in my vegetables first because it's gonna soak up all of those juices. And I just wanna make sure that my carrots get nice and tender. If I put my carrots up top, then usually they're not gonna get cooked um, to be nice and tender. So that's why I do it that way. And then I have about a whole onion that I went ahead and sliced up. I let that cook in a low setting for eight hours and now I'm just gonna take it out and it is very, very tender. Everything is just falling off the bone. The carrots are nice and tender. The potatoes are nice and tender. You can just kind of look at it and see that it is just completely falling off the bone there. Um, it was flavored wonderfully. This meal was absolutely delicious. Now I'm gonna be making some smothered chicken legs in the crock pot. So I need one cup of chicken broth, half a cup of ketchup, half a cup of brown sugar, and then I'm gonna use one of these packets of onion soup mix. And then I need just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon each, and then go ahead and give that a good stir. As you're stirring, it should thicken up just a little bit. Now we have our crock pot. I have my chicken legs, they're kind of frozen, but they're gonna cook in the crock pot, no biggie whatsoever. And then I'm just gonna put all of that sauce right on top of my chicken legs. I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna let that cook at a low heat for about four hours. It doesn't take very long for those chicken legs to get nice and cooked through. If you cook them any longer, then they are gonna end up being dry. Okay, I'm gonna take all of my chicken legs out and I'm gonna thicken up that sauce that's in the crock pot just a little bit. So you can use xanthan gum or you can use cornstarch. A lot of times I use uh, xanthan gum just because it's a little bit less on the carbs and on the sugar so I like to use that but this time I just did cornstarch I just used a couple tablespoons of cornstarch and that was it and it thickened up just fine and then I put my chicken legs right back in there just to kind of soak up that thicker of a sauce and this is what it turned out to look like after it was done I paired this with a baked potato and some corn. Look at that chicken, it is so tender. This one was delicious. Next we're gonna be making something that is my family's favorite way of making chicken and that is Mississippi chicken in the crock pot. This one is divine. I put three chicken breasts at the very bottom. Next I'm gonna be putting in some au jus type of seasoning, um, just one packet, and then I need an ounce of ranch seasoning just right on top of that. 
now we're going to be putting one whole stick of butter. I think the recipe actually calls for like six tablespoons, but I just put the whole stick in there. And then I need half of a jar of pepperoncinis. And then I'm also going to be putting in about a pound of carrots right on top of that. All right, and I let that cook on a low heat for about six to eight hours. Once that is done, your carrots should be nice and tender. Your chicken should be absolutely delicious. I have never made this where it wasn't super tender. It is so flavorful. One of my favorite ways of making chicken, what you're going to do next is just shred it all up and you can even make this into like sandwiches. You can just kind of have like a shredded chicken on the side. It really is whatever you choose to do. We just kind of shredded it up and made that as like our main uh, dish right there. And then we had some green beans and some carrots to go with it. You could also do like a baked potato or some type of um, starchy carb on the side. But I love having it with a salad as well. Next is chicken and gravy. And we are going to be doing this in the crock pot. I love making crock pot meals. They're so easy to do to throw in the crock pot and then just have dinner ready on the table. So I just put about two pounds of chicken breast at the very bottom of this crock pot. You want to use two packets of either some type of poultry seasoning, chicken or turkey. And then I have one can of cream of chicken soup that I put in. And then I put in two cups of water. And then just go ahead and put the lid on and let that cook on a high heat for about four hours. And then go ahead and shred that up. And then I like to put in some seasoning, so parsley is really good in a meal like this. And then I just put probably about a teaspoon of parsley in there. Go ahead and give that a good stir. And then I like to make rice in the Instapot. That is the only way that I make rice. I just think it cooks so perfectly that way. So that's what I did here. I made some rice and I just poured that gravy, chicken and gravy stuff right on top. And you have a meal that is absolutely delicious. And of course you could pair it with like some green beans and a roll would probably be good too. Up next is chicken noodle casserole. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get started on our noodles. So I have some medium egg noodles that I'm gonna go ahead and cook all of those up. So about 12 ounces is what you need. And then I'm gonna cook up about two pounds of chicken breast as well. In between one and a half pounds to two pounds, probably be about right. Go ahead and cook those up until they are nice and cooked through. In a large bowl, I need two cups of mixed vegetables alongside of two cups of milk. And then I'm also gonna do two cans of cream of chicken soup. And of course you can do homemade if you guys don't prefer the canned stuff. I know a lot of people do not like that. So just consider that as well. Um, and then I'm also gonna do a cup of mayonnaise. And then I have two cups of shredded cheese, but I'm only gonna do half of that for now. And then go ahead and give that a good mix. It should be nice and creamy. And if you guys don't like mixed vegetables, you can put in whatever vegetables that you do like. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put in all of our chicken that we had went ahead and cooked up. Go ahead and give that another good stir as well. Okay, I'm gonna to toss that to the side and to my nine by 13 pan. I'm gonna lightly grease that. I'm gonna go ahead and put our egg noodles at the very bottom. They should be done by then. And then I'm gonna put in that creamy mixture that we had just made with the vegetables. And then go ahead and give that a really good stir as well. Stir it together till it's all combined. It should be very creamy and you should pl have plenty of that sauce mixture. It shouldn't be dry whatsoever. Okay, and then we're gonna put that cheese right on top, just the remaining one cup. If you guys wanna put more, you know, more power to you because you guys know I love cheese. And then we're gonna set that to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and make our topping mixture. So I went ahead and melted one cup of butter and then I have one cup of like some breadcrumbs. I think they're like an Italian style breadcrumbs. And I just put that right on top of our cheese that we had done. The recipe called for one cup, but I didn't end up using all of it. I didn't feel like it needed it. And then 
uh, for the one stick of butter that we had melted. We're just going to put that right on top. Okay, and then put that in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes. And this is what it'll turn out to look like after it is all done. It is nice and cooked through. You guys, this turned out lovely. Um, you could pair this with a salad. I believe that that would be very, very delicious. Add a really great crunch on the top. This one was a hit. Up next is chicken alfredo bubble up. If you guys have ever done bubble up, guys, it is delicious. Anything bubble up I've ever made has been a showstopper. I'm serious. It's been really delicious. So this is definitely one that you want to try. So in a 9 by 13 pan, I just cut up those biscuits probably more into like eighths, just bite-sized pieces, put them at the very bottom of, the, of that dish. And then I have about two pounds of chicken that I had already cooked up. And then I have a jar of Alfredo sauce that I'm going to go ahead and put in there. And of course, I kind of rinse it out with some water. I have a whole bag of chopped up spinach that I went ahead and put in there. So if you kind of rinse it all out, it's probably about a cup to a cup and a half of spinach. Go ahead and give that a really good stir, getting that all mixed in together. Bring back your 9 by 13 pan, and all we're going to do is just pour that right on top of those biscuits. This is one of the simplest and easiest meals that you could possibly make, and it turned out phenomenal. So if you definitely want to try this one, it is really delicious. Go ahead and spread that out with like a spatula. I want to make sure that all that's nice and even. And then we're going to put some mozzarella cheese just right on top of that. So I have about two cups worth of mozzarella cheese because you guys know I love lots of cheese. Go ahead and make sure that's nice and even. Put that in the oven at 350 for about 40 minutes. You want to make sure those biscuits are nice and cooked through. So definitely check the middle of that to make sure that those biscuits are not doughy whatsoever. Plate it up. Look at that cheese. I mean, it is absolutely delicious. I don't know why I've only made this once because it was very good and I need to make it again very soon. Um, of course, like having like a salad, some type of vegetable to go with this would be delicious. Up next is chicken enchiladas. So to a medium saucepan, I have three tablespoons of butter. We're going to add one teaspoon of cumin and one teaspoon of coriander and go ahead and give that a good stir until it's all melted through. Next, we'll add a fourth of a cup of flour, giving that a really good stir until it's nice and thick. I'm going to add one and a half cups of chicken broth, giving that a good stir, and it should really thicken up. Might have to stir that for just a couple minutes. Next, I'm going to add one cup of sour cream to our mixture, also one can of green chilies, and then give that another good stir. Once we have all that mixed together, we're going to go ahead and set that to the side. In a large mixing bowl, we have about two, one and a half to two cups of shredded up chicken, and then we have about an ounce of taco seasoning alongside of one can of green chilies. And then I like to add just like a little bit of corn and black beans to mine usually. So I have about one uh, cup of black beans and it's, there's nothing on the black beans. It's just kind of frozen still. And then one can of corn. We're also going to put in about a cup and a half of shredded cheese. And then I like to add about three fourths a cup of that mixture, um, that sour cream mixture that we had just made. And I like to mix that all together in that mixing bowl. Make sure it's stirred through completely. In a 9 by 13 pan, I'm going to go ahead and lightly grease that. And I'm just going to make up our tortillas. So I'm just putting all that mixture in the middle of my, my tortilla. And I'm going to roll it up. This should make close to 8 to 10 burritos or enchiladas, however you want to say it. It just kind of depends on how big your enchiladas are. We're going to top it with that sauce. And then we're also going to top it with some shredded cheese. Mm -hmm. 
And then we're going to place that in the oven at 350 for about 40 minutes. 30 to 40 minutes is about what I like to have it at. And then, of course, I put some sour cream and salsa on ours. I also put some chips on the side. And then I love to have rice on the side with my enchiladas. Next is chicken pot pie bubble up. So to a 9 by 13 pan, we're going to go ahead and lightly grease that. We're gonna take one can of biscuits and we're just gonna go ahead and chop them up into bite-sized pieces. We're gonna place them in the bottom of our pan and just make sure that they're nice and level, nice and even. Then to a large bowl, we're gonna take one can of cream of chicken soup. Also one cup of sour cream. And then a whole bag of mixed vegetables, the frozen mixed vegetables. So that should be about 10 ounces. And then we need about a cup to cup and a half of shredded up chicken. Go ahead and giving that a really good stir. Some of my um, vegetables are kind of frozen, so it took just a minute to get that all stirred through. But it should be nice and creamy just like this. We're gonna take our nine by 13 pan and we're just gonna put that creamy mixture right on top of our biscuits. And we do want to season it with some salt and pepper right on top. And then of course, I'm gonna add my cheese because what is a casserole without the cheese? <laughs> so I have about a cup and a half of shredded cheese right on top of that. And then I put, the, put it in the oven at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes and this is what it comes to look like after it's all done i love a good bubble up casserole it's just so delicious all the vegetables it's really all you need for a complete and wholesome meal this meal is absolutely delicious Up next is Italian chicken soup. So in a Dutch oven, we're gonna need 32 ounces of chicken broth, one teaspoon of parsley, three fourths teaspoon of salt, a fourth a teaspoon of oregano, a fourth a teaspoon of basil, an eighth a teaspoon of black pepper, and then one teaspoon of minced garlic. Also three fourths cup of cream, or you can do milk, that is fine too. Two cups of rotini noodles or any type of short pasta, that's fine. I'm also going to need one cup of shredded up chicken. Go ahead and put the lid on and let that cook till all the rotini noodles are nice and tender. They're nice and al dente. Go ahead and give that another good stir. And then we're going to put about a cup of mozzarella cheese in, in our soup just to kind of give it a little bit of a thick texture. Also to kind of make it more on the cheesy side. Okay, go ahead and give that a good stir until it's nice and melted, and that is it. That's all it needs, and it's actually really good. Like, it doesn't seem like it would be that good, but it is very good. I love making this. It was very hearty, and you guys, I just love soups. Addy, how's lunch today? Mm -mm. Good. So we're having some Italian chicken soup, and then I just gave him some bread to go with it. How was it? Good. It's the best thing, Mommy made it so good. You, you have say to that try every it. time. You I have miss. to try it. You <laughs> have to try it. How about you? Mm -hmm. You don't know. Is it good? I have to try it. You have to try it. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Good deal. I'm so good that, that Mommy made it. Okay. <laughs> Now we're going to be doing Monterey Jack Chicken Bubble Up. So I need some Junior Biscuits. I just did two small Junior Biscuits. Went ahead and cut them up into bite-sized pieces. I have some shredded up chicken that I went ahead and used. So it's about a cup and a half to two cups worth. I have this chopped spinach I'm going to go ahead and put in about half of the bag. Not all of it. Um, and then I'm also going to put in one can of cream of chicken soup. Of course, you guys can make homemade cream of chicken. That is totally up to you. Um, I just kind of do it this way out of convenience. And then I'm gonna need one cup of sour cream. And then we're going to add in just a little bit of some Monterey Jack cheese. 
Um, you can also use like a mozzarella, I'm sure would be fine too. Um, but we're going to go ahead and add that in there. Also, we have some of these fried onions. I'm going to put in half of this container. So probably about a cup's worth. And we're going to go ahead and give that a good stir. Once all that is stirred through and it's nice and creamy, we're going to set that to the side and then we're going to bring over our uh, biscuit mixture and we're just going to put that creamy spinach mixture just right on top. And then of course we're going to spread it out to make sure it's nice and even. And then we have our French onions that we're just going to put as a topping. So you can put as little or as much as you like. This is what sealed the deal for me because I love a good crunch on top when it comes to casseroles. This was heavenly. Go ahead and put this in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes. You just want to make sure that the biscuits in the middle get nice and cooked through. Uh, sometimes those are kind of hard to kind of... Um, guesstimate because sometimes those biscuits just do not get cooked so sometimes it's 35 minutes sometimes 45 minutes definitely depends on your oven and the biscuits that you're using look how delicious this is this one was a huge hit and i just paired it with a little bit of some bread on the side but that is all that we had for dinner that night Next, I want to do some chicken tenders using Jiffy cornbread mix. So to a plate or a bowl, we're going to put in one box of Jiffy cornbread mix. And then I have just a couple tablespoons of flour that I wanted to mix in there as well. And then I'm just going to be putting in some seasoning. So I have about one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning and then go ahead and give that a good stir until it's all combined and with the cornbread mix. All right, so now I'm gonna put that over next to the skillet. I'm gonna get our skillet out and it's nice and heated. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some type of oil. If you wanna do bacon grease or olive oil or um, any type of oil really is fine or bacon grease. I love using bacon grease. Um, and then we're just gonna take our chicken tenders and we're gonna dip it into the, the cornbread kind of um, batter that we have and then I like to dip it in the egg and then I like to top it off with dipping it in the batter once more and I just did that to all the chicken tenders and you're just going to cook them until they are nice and cooked through. Um, I do like to use a, a um, meat thermometer when it comes to this kind of stuff because I really don't want to underdo them whatsoever so and they'll kind of burn fast if you're not keeping them on like a medium to low heat and I just had this with some french fries and I liked dipping mine in some ranch sauce because uh hello that's like the best way to eat chicken tenders um, and these were kind of sweet so the ranch sauce made it really good up next is some chicken roll-ups so to a large bowl I need one cup of milk and then we need two cups of cream of chicken soup Now I need one cup of shredded cheese. Go ahead and give that a really good stir. And I have my kids helping me because they love helping me in the kitchen. Okay, once it's nice and creamy, it's all stirred through. We're gonna set that to the side. Next, we're going to go ahead and cut up these crescent rolls. So I'm just kind of using a pizza cutter and cutting on the dotted lines here. Now we have some shredded up chicken we're just going to put right on top of the crescent rolls and then we have our mixture that we just made um, with the cream of chicken soups and we're just going to put just a little bit probably about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons just right on top of the chicken there and it's going to be very very messy so just keep that in mind i have a 9 by 13 pan and i'm just going to roll these up and put them at the bottom of my 9 by 13 pan do make sure that your pan is nice and greased. Otherwise, it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan and nobody likes that. This is really hard to roll up just because of how sticky it all is. And then 
I just poured that sauce mixture right on top of our little crescent rolls that we just made. And then um, just kind of make sure it even it all out. Also, we have a, just a little bit of cheese that we're going to put right on top to it, just to give it a little bit of a cheesy texture on top. We're going to bake this in the oven at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. You guys, this was heavenly. This was so good. I feel like this is a much easier version of making like chicken enchiladas. They were very sweet and yet savory at the same time. These were a huge hit and of course having some like rice and some chips and salsa on the side is going to amp this dinner up even more. This one was a huge hit as well. All right, Annie, how's your food? Do you like it? Okay, and what's your favorite meal that I made in this video? This, one. this one's your favorite? Mm -hmm. All right, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Okay, was this your favorite meal or what was your favorite one? Taco pizza. Taco pizza. What do you think, baby? Good. Good. <laughs> what was your favorite meal? This one? Ooh. How is it? <laughs> this? <laughs> what do you think, Danielle? That's good. What was your favorite? My favorite one is taco pizza. Taco pizza. Up next is chicken and wild rice, but we're going to be doing it in the crock pot. So now we just need a couple chicken breasts, so just two chicken breasts, and then I need two cups of sliced carrots, one diced onion, half a cup of celery and then I need about four cups of chicken broth and it looks a little darker that's just because it's homemade and then two cups of water now I'm going to go ahead and add in one cup of wild rice don't put in regular rice because it will not turn out good <laughs> then we need two teaspoons of parsley one teaspoon of garlic powder two teaspoons of salt one teaspoon of oregano and then um, about a half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of rosemary, and half a teaspoon of thyme. And then we're going to just let that cook on a low heat for about eight hours. And once the eight hours is up, then our chicken should be super tender, ready to cut up. It should be very, very easy to go ahead and shred up. You can kind of shred it up in the crock pot or you can take it out like this and shred it up. While we are doing that, I'm gonna go over here and get started on some butter. So I have half a stick of butter and then we have a fourth of a cup of flour. We're gonna go ahead and give that a good mix. Try to create some type of like a roux. And then we have two cups of milk that we're gonna go ahead and add to the saucepan and we're just gonna stir it until it becomes nice and thick. We want a really nice and a thick creaminess because we're going to add this to our crock pot. So we have our shredded up chicken, but I have not added it yet because I wanted to add in this cream first and then we will go ahead and add in our chicken. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and stir all that together and it should, within the next couple minutes, be very, very creamy. You guys are gonna love this one. This was really good. I've made wild rice in the crock pot before and it wasn't really that good, but this recipe was on fire. It was so delicious. Guys, go make some homemade bread and try this recipe. It was amazing. I know it's not soup season, but you guys, this one was delicious. Definitely a huge hit. Okay, now I'm going to be making some chicken tacos, and of course I'm going to do that in the crock pot since it's so simple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add in just a couple of chicken breasts, and then I'm going to pour about an ounce of ranch seasoning right on top of that, and then an ounce of taco seasoning, one cup of salsa, 
And then I have some black beans that I have in this baggie because I like to put mine in the freezer. One can of Rotel and go ahead and cook that on a high heat for about four hours. Go ahead and use your meat masher, stir that together, make sure it's nice and shredded and that is it, it's so simple. And then we just had some rice and some tortilla chips on the side. This was delicious. I love to make um, in, my rice in the Instant Pot, even Spanish rice. It's so easy and so delicious. Next is going to be some enchilada soup. So I need a whole container of chicken broth that we're just going to put at the very bottom of my crock pot. And then I have one whole diced up onion that we went ahead and put into the, the chicken broth. I need about two tablespoons of minced garlic one can of Rotel, one can, a small can of enchilada sauce. I love using the old El Paso type of brand. And then one can of black beans, half a teaspoon of paprika, half a, half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then a fourth a teaspoon of oregano, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then a fourth a teaspoon of pepper, and then half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Okay, and now I'm also gonna add in one can of corn. Go ahead and give that a good stir. You're gonna cook that on a low heat for about four hours. And then after the four hours are up, we're gonna go ahead and add in one block of cream cheese. And we're also going to add in um, about a cup and a half of shredded up chicken. And then you're just gonna let that cook for about another hour and that is it. You now have a delicious dinner. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoy it. If you enjoy chicken dinners, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing below if you have not already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.